Hi, everybody, and welcome to the DRF Breeding Report. I'm Dan Illman, always pleased to be talking pedigree with Nicole Russo on site at Pimlico Racecourse, of course, the site for the Preakness Stakes, which will be held this Saturday. And in this week's DRF Breeding Report, Nicole and I are going to talk about some of the new shooters expected for the Preakness as of Tuesday afternoon. Nicole, let's start with Cloud Computing, who finished second in the Gotham, then ran in the Wood Memorial. Uh, okay efforts in both, and this horse is a really strong pedigree, especially on the bottom half. Yeah, on the bottom half of his page, I really do think he wants to go long. Uh, his dam is by AP and D, who, of course, is such an important source of stamina, such a brilliant broodmare sire. His dam was multiple graded place going longer. And the second dam is grade one winner and the very good handicap mare, Halo America, who was a stakes producer herself. So the bottom side of the page, I really think there's a lot of depth there to balance out. The, the top where I'm not necessarily sure the folds by McLean's Music are going to want to go that far. Yeah, it's still a little bit early, but McLean's Music, from the limited time we saw him on the racetrack, he was brilliant. One race at six furlongs, he won it with a 114 buyer speed figure. He stands for an $8,500 stud fee at Hill and Dale. Cloud Computing sold for $200,000 as a yearling, so he's got speed on top, and you certainly mentioned the class on the bottom, especially Halo America, the winner of the Apple Blossom. Conquest Mo Money, it's very rare to get a bargain in this business. Perhaps these folks did get a bargain. A horse that sold for $180,000 as a yearling only went through the ring for $8,500 at the Conquest Dispersal and he gave Classic Empire all he could hope for in the Arkansas Derby. Yeah, this is a really tough little horse. Uh, and he's got classic breeding to back it up both top and bottom. He's from the second crop of the phenomenal young stallion Uncle Mo, who, of course, had last year's Derby winner Nyquist in his first crop. Uh, he's out of an unraced mare by Seeking the Gold, who's a terrific, terrific prune mare sire. The dam is a half to Canadian champion serenading, who could go long. Uh, this is a family of brilliant speed who finished third in the Belmont as well as being a grade one winner on synthetic and multiple grade one place going long on turf. Uh, it's the family of Belmont winner Touch Gold, Canadian champion with approval in Izvestia, Jockey Club Gold Cup winner Haynesfield. So a lot of class and depth down there underneath Uncle Mo, who, who we know can throw a classic horse. So much class on the bottom side of this pedigree, and you hit the nail right on the head concerning this horse's gritty determination. We saw him fight off my legacy in the stretch of the Arkansas Derby, only to be run down by the two-year-old champion Classic Empire. Let's move on to Multiplier, the recent winner of the Illinois Derby. Now, this horse is sort of defying his pedigree, in a sense, by being able to successfully stretch out. This horse really seems to want a distance of ground. Yeah, he uh, he really is. I think you hit the nail on the head with the word defying his pedigree. He's from the first crop of the Factor, who is a very good racehorse, uh, ran well at Oaklawn going longer, but did his best work with a multiple grade one winner sprinting multipliers out of a trippy mare so you're putting speed on speed his half brother fearless dragon scored his only career win at seven furlongs so multiplier is really outrunning kind of all of these pedigree indicators and we saw him eat up the ground late at the illinois derby and brendan walsh has just wanted this horse to run long ever since he began his career joel rosario will pick up the mount for the preakness stakes senior investment sire discreetly mine was a very fast horse sort of a sprinter and a miler but senior investment the recent winner of the lexington stakes has a stout pedigree on the bottom half and perhaps influenced by his broodmare sire deputy commander yeah as he mentioned you know deputy commander winner of the traverse uh and this mayor plaid by him really ran against some very good horses you go through her past performances and you see names like ginger punch india kettle one up uh plaid was a multiple stakes winner going a mile and a 16th and a mile and she's really helping balance out discreetly mine who did his best work at shorter distances but you look back a little further and He's from a stamina-inducing male line himself. He's by Mineshaft, he's by AP Indy, so 
perhaps I just skipped a generation with discreetly mine. And that damn plaid, you're, you're right, was really a, a tough, hardy horse. She ran a bunch of times, as you mentioned, a multiple stakes winner, and she herself a half-sister to a runner named Ashmore, who was third in the Pennsylvania Derby, obviously going long. Let's talk about Term of Art, because boy, does this horse have stamina and class in spades by two-time Breeders' Cup Classic winner Tisnow, who stands for $60,000 at Windstar, and then the bottom half of this pad pedigree, just classy lanes and influences everywhere you look. Yeah, uh, the damn miles of style, her first two dams, Tommy Sue's Delight and Prospector's Delight are both multiple grade one winners. Tommy Sue's Delight is a sister to Horse of the Year Mine Shaft. Uh, she threw Mr. Sidney, who is a grade one winner. Uh, putting kids now over these storm cat mares has produced eight stakes winners, including Folklore, who's a champion, IRAP, who won this year's Bluegrass, and most of his now runners, like that two-time Breeders' Cup Classic winner, have done their best work going long. So, term of art, definitely this is the toughest test of his career, but man, what a classy pedigree. These five horses, they're going to have their work cut out to take on Always Dreaming and Classic Empire and the Preakness. Of the five, which one do you think has the best chance to truly stay this distance and perhaps pull off an upset? Gosh, I just, you know, Conquest Mo Money is, as we mentioned, I mean, he's he's got classic winners on both sides of his page with Uncle Mo, you know, throwing a derby winner in his first crop, and then names like Touch Gold, Brilliant Speed on the bottom side of this horse's pedigree. And Conquest Mo Money has really already lived up to some of that by running so well against some of the best horses of his generation. Um, I, I really think that he's at least a horse to not leave out of the exotics on Saturday. Great analysis as always, Nicole. I urge everybody to follow Nicole on Twitter, at DRF Russo. Of course, follow DRF Breeding, at DRF Breeding, for the latest news and notes emanating from Pimlico during this Preakness week. Next week on the Breeding Report, we'll probably recap the Preakness. We'll see you then.